Oh. Chucked a rod. Yeah, it's chucked a rod out. Seized. Oh, no. <laughs> this is the moment my Audi RS6 left me stranded over 5,000 miles away from home. Oh, no. I bought this car cheap from auction around a month ago and we rebuilt it in 24 hours. <laughs> After that, I fitted this insane wide body kit with intentions to do something I've never tried before. Shipping the car halfway across the world to one of the biggest car shows ever, SEMA. But it all went terribly wrong. We may need some help. Okay. Right now, the RS6 is in Los Angeles and we are here. So we need to get on the plane and off we go, come on. The RS6 has already been on its own little journey. It's made for it, perfect. It got loaded into a container, put onto a boat, and then shipped from Portsmouth all the way to LA docks. Now we've just got to catch up with it. We are on the flight, ready to go to LA for the first time ever in my existence. The plan when we arrive is to collect the car and drive it from LA all the way to Las Vegas, where we park it up for the show, SEMA. Here it is, here it is. <laughs> it looks ridiculous. Oh. I forgot how wide that oh, it is. It is literally so wide. It's looking good. Thanks so much. Uh I was like, I got on the left side first, like, where's the steering wheel? Oh, yeah, <laughs> well, you've got the passenger side. Yeah, I'm not used to seeing an Audi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Is, guess, is there any RS6s it, like this shape in the US? Never. I mean, really? no, as, as, as far as I've seen, I've never seen one before. Oh, that's cool. If you have the windows down, people be tripping out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because the wrong side. <laughs> the car and ourselves made it to LA. And it's now time to begin the road trip. You excited for the trip? Right. Can't wait. <laughs> it kind of feels normal driving this car here. Yeah? It feels like the road's so big, I just feel like I fit in. The car was driving great, and it seemed the US guys were loving it. Whilst was in the US, it would be rude not to check out what the US car scene is like. Which brings us on to our first stop. We're getting in the exotic area, Matt. And we're in a wagon. Yeah. <laughs> first stop, cars and coffee, which has exceeded my expectations a lot. I mean, look, look at this. The RS6 has got in the exotic car park that I, I mean there's not in there's not even this many supercars in the UK and there's everything here and everyone's just come here on Saturday morning it's like what nine in the morning yeah well we're not even at SEMA yet I don't so want to know what SEMA yeah, gonna, like. gonna be like <laughs> <laughs> okay so the US car scene is pretty cool but we've still got a few places to stop off at before getting to see me. I've always dirtied everything that I found. See no difference. Any fries, any drinks? Yeah, fries, please. Save all the things that I said that night. But our next location <laughs> will be the last location the RS6 will drive. Now that you know. <gasps> America without a drag race and of course we've got the RS6 and we're about to race it against a few more fast cars. Half a mile in the US. Come on Audi RS6. This was it. We we're about to push the RS6 to the absolute limit. Remember we had this car tuned to 691 horsepower back in the UK. 691 horsepower 
with 960 newton meters of torque. And our first race today is against a 700 horsepower BMW M5. <laughs> Similar to the one I previously rebuilt. Who do you think is going to win? We are, of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's Ice yeah, Man. <laughs> you love it. <laughs> we line both cars up, both around 700 horsepower, and both the big family cars. Let's see if Audi really is better than BMW. Here we go. Bad start from us. I think that Audi lost and there was a lot of smoke coming out the back of it. Engine stalled. Oh no! <laughs> we just broke it. No, you broke it. <laughs> so the BMW's back, but Matt isn't and it's, I think there was a lot of smoke coming out the back of it. Hopefully the car's all right. Um, he's like all the way over there. The fact he's not back yet is not good. Oh no, <laughs> what are we going to do? We're all the way out here. Oh dear. <clears throat> right, let's see. One run. One run. And it's not... Oh. What broke? As we got over 100 mile an hour, the car went into limp mode. The engine light then started flashing and the car completely stalled. But there was nothing obvious we could see under the bonnet and underneath looked completely dry. Nothing underneath, it just stinks of oil, doesn't it? So try, try and start it. Seized. Oh, no! No, we... It seized it. This was bad. The engine is completely seized. <laughs> no! Oh, no! Oh! Yeah, it's chucked a rod out. There was a lot of smoke coming from the side of the engine. So our first thoughts, there's a hole in the side of it. But it was really difficult to see. Before we went, before we came up, we checked the oil, we checked the, the temperatures, it's done many, plenty of miles. How do you plan on that? This is not good. This is not good at all. You will play. What happened? You will play. Well, how did, how's he done that? Oh, is that metal? No. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I, I still don't know what, what's happened there. Now, before we went away, you guys will remember that we had to take the car to Audi themselves because there was a recall on the oil line which feeds the turbos. Now, Audi couldn't do the job themselves because they'd have to take off the body kit. You might not be able to put the body kit back on, but... So we bought the parts to do it. Problem is, we didn't have the time to do it before the car left. So our initial thoughts was that it was a blown turbo. I never heard any noise. No, but we had helmets on, didn't we? But it felt like it just lost power instantly. Like, it weren't long down the strip until we lost power. I think we're sleeping in the tent. <laughs> we still couldn't see any damage to the side of the engine. Can't see oat. But the turbos did look okay. It seized as oat. But the engine was definitely seized. Are we building another engine again? <laughs> <laughs> No oil in there, is there? No, there's no oil in there. The coolant looks low, very low. Is it a belt or a chain on these? It's, it's a chain, yeah, it's a chain. I think we're walking home. <laughs> we were stuck. So the guys at Amiga Motorsport called the fire service to help us. But then things got even better. Oh, brilliant. My towing eye is missing. Oh. Great. 
Right, okay, I'm gonna see if it'll go in neutral first. That'll be a good one. When I got back in the car and turned the ignition on, I noticed something. Oh uh, yeah, there's no cooling, Dad. All the coolant's come out, the coolant lights come on. Is that gone into the engine, you reckon? That's what could have been the smoke then. It might have, uh, maybe the head gasket went or something and the water got pumped straight into the cylinder. And, it, and it's hydro locked it. Yeah, that could have made sense. So for some reason, I had no coolant. And also it was showing me that the oil was overfilled. So for sure, the coolant has somehow ended up in the oil. But it's still a mystery how. Yeah, that seems, seems quite good. Yeah, so just keep the tension on the cord. Yeah, okay, got it. see me do this, I just want you to just break a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> Another epic, <laughs> epic episode of Matt Armstrong. <laughs> Sometimes things just go wrong. <laughs> it seems we've failed. I know this RS6 wasn't going to be anywhere near as good as the cars that go to SEMA, as people have spent years getting their car ready to go to it. But to rebuild this car in 24 hours and transform it like we did with the people I did it with, was a dream come true. And to get it into SEMA would finish that dream. So I'm not gonna give up just yet. Um, we may need uh, some help. <laughs> um, we, I've blown the engine up on the RS6. Uh, <laughs> Uh, at the minute, we're outside LA. We're in uh, a place called Bakersfield, and uh, we're getting the car shipped back to LA. We, we're not quite decided yet, but we're just uh, sorting our options out. We're thinking, is the P1 going to SEMA? P1's going to SEMA, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's on its way there right now. And I assume it's going to be trailered back to your place? Yeah. Um, did, did you have any room for, <laughs> for, for an yeah, RS6? Bring, bring, it, bring it by, dude, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it done. Yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Freddy's a legend. I told you Freddy would help us out. <laughs> so we had a plan. Problem being, we were in Bakersfield and Freddy's place in Florida was over two and a half thousand miles away. And we still have the issue of getting it to SEMA. And the runway that we're racing on becomes active in the next half an hour. So we've got to get the car off it. Now it's weird the RS6 would just give up like this without any notice. If we check out the car vertical report, it's pretty good. I can see the last recorded mileage was 37,000 miles, which is pretty low for one of these cars. I know it's never been stolen, and I know it's never had any mileage fraud. And of course, there's no outstanding finance. And the amber light at the top of the report is to show it's been in an accident, which we know about because we rebuilt it. Yep, getting the car on the trailer without a tow hook is pretty hard. Now, another cool thing about Car Vertical, if your car was in an accident, then sometimes it will show you the photos of the car when it was auctioned off at the Car Crash Auction website. Well done everyone. I worked really hard in here. <laughs> <laughs> so to take your car out, a friend's car, or a car that you're potentially about to buy, click the link in the description box below and use code Matt for discount on that check. Um, hundreds of miles later, we're at the DDE HQ, shout out to uh, Dave and Damon and Mike and everyone at DDE because they are letting us put the RS6 here, which isn't here yet. So <laughs> we're gonna go into the, the DDE shop and wait for the RS6 and unload it without a tow hook. This is just, uh, it only happens to us, it only happens to us. <laughs> Once again, thanks so much to the DDE guys for letting us use the workshop for now. It's crazy even being here, so we might as well enjoy it whilst we can. Oh 
mercy man. The RS6 turned up, but to add insult to injury, it looks like we had more damage. The strap used to tie down the car has rubbed away some of the paint on the outside of the wheel. Oh, oh no. But that's the least of our worries at the minute. For now, we wanted to get the RS6 inside DDE's place, get it on the ramp and find out exactly what has happened to this engine. We were pushing it towards the two post ramp, but it looked like the lift might damage the kit, so instead, we decided to jack it up and go old school. Yeah, I could probably do it with 227. Yeah. <sighs> Once I got the under tray off, there was no really obvious signs of any holes in the engine, although there was oil at the bottom of it, but not loads. It was really difficult to see anything. I then checked the inlet pipes going into both turbos to see if I could see any fluid or anything that shouldn't be there. But again, all look fine. You have signs that it, it yeah. does, it's going, it can't just go boom. The only thing it, it like, it, what if it well, lifted, could it have lifted bump. the head up? Yeah, because like you're running too much power, could it have lifted the head? But then some people run these engines quite mm. faster than that. It's 11 o'clock in the evening. 12 o'clock at night. 12 o'clock? Yeah, it's 12 o'clock now. Cool. It's 12 o'clock <laughs> in the <laughs> evening. And oh. we're taking engines apart. <laughs> Our next point of attack was the spark plugs. We was going to start by removing them to see if we could see any damage to any of them or see if we could see any damage inside the cylinder itself. Starting off with the right hand side of the car. The first one didn't really look that bad at all. But the second one. Oh no. Oh dear, engine oh. very bad. <laughs> Looks like something has hit it or it's burned. Oh Parts of it was just missing. It looks like it's been hit. That one is very wet. And the next one was soaked in coolant. Not ideal. And the one after that, also soaked. Mm. <laughs> I think that might be a mix of coolant. Oh no, it is, it is just coolant, this one. This one's coolant. And this one's very bad. I still have no idea what the coolant thing is about. And that one's absolute, that's perished. The top of that spark plug has burnt to a million pieces, that has. The, the thing is, the good thing is, it's got nothing to do with the recall because the turbos would have gone and the turbos seem okay, but this is something to do with timing, head gasket. Truth is, we just didn't know. Whenever you're ready. Right, we're gonna, t we're gonna try and turn the engine over now without the spark plugs in, so uh, there's like no compression and it should shoot out stuff, if it turns over that is. Engine very bad. <laughs> yes. Engine very, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> what has happened to it? It is still a mystery. Seema <laughs> <laughs> is tomorrow. How are we going to get this finished and fixed with Seema? We've got a wheel to refurb, a engine to fix, and that's it. So we're close. What, I mean, more to the question, what happened to you? What happened to that? What has happened? There's something seriously wrong with the RS6, in case you haven't all realised by now. And we did all of this to make it to SEMA, and we've not made it. It feels kind of disappointing, really. We have flew about 5,000 miles. I don't know what we're going to do. Guys, please comment in the comment section below have any suggestions or any previous experience on an Audi RS6. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I guess I'll see you in the next video where I don't know where we'll be or what we'll be doing, but this RS6 needs to be fixed because we need to get it back home. Look, she's loving it. She's loving it. Mm. She loves this.
<laughs> good look at it. She's she's we'll... absolutely lovely. She's doing a fantastic job. When we get back, she's saying thanks very much. Start it up and drive off. <laughs> <laughs>